Hey fellows, welcome back to another episode here at the Man Core. We are in part three of the three-part series of how to become the best man that you can. And if you are new here, the Man Core is a community of men digging to the core of who they really are to find out why they're really here and who it is that they really want to become. Please consider subscribing. We cover three different topics in this channel, and that is masculinity, health, and relationships. So, today is the third part in the three-part series of how to become the best version of man uh, of a man as we can. So, if you've been watching this week, the three areas that we've really been focusing on are, to me, the most core elements of becoming the best version of ourselves as men as we possibly can. And... I feel these three areas are the ones that affect us all and the ones that we really need to make sure that we have a good understanding of. So the first one that we covered was ego. The second one that we covered was mission or purpose. And today's video, we're going to talk about confidence. And this is the one that I think most guys have a really good desire to understand what it means for them, how to attain it, where to go to find it, what it is, what it means. So I'm going to try and, you know, pull all those three videos together for you and to tell you one, how they're all intermingled and my evolution of understanding what confidence is. So looking at what the very core definition of what confidence is, if, if you're making an assumption that confidence is the appearance of being strong and being kind of arrogant, that's not really, that's not confidence. So, you know, I grew up where there was a lot of, you know, pickup artists and a lot of stuff online where they were kind of teaching you how to not really be confident, but how to kind of be an asshole and actually to kind of magnify your ego, which I've covered before in the first part. So confidence is not something that comes from the facade that you put on that is really false evidence appearing real. Confidence actually, the very definition of it, is knowing how to do something to the nth degree or knowing how to do, do something that nobody could really dispute. So I've given the example a couple of times of Tom Brady being a quarterback, right? So he's confident in his ability to be a quarterback. Who's gonna tell him any different, right? So because of the repetition and his experience and because of his level of success, certainly he would be confident about his competencies to be a good quarterback. So that's his mission. It's, it's something that he would have done for free. It's not something that, uh, you know, he had a great deal of success to begin with. He was like, I think, one of the last guys to get drafted from Michigan. But anyway, last guys in the draft. But anyway, so the point I'm making here is confidence is not the appearance of being strong or being successful. I've tried that. And any time that it came down to somebody kind of pressing or, you know, there, there was a time when I needed to respond or really deliver on that area of success or deliver on, you know, being a strong person. I was tested, my confidence was tested, and, you know, women are gonna test that confidence, the world's gonna test that confidence, it's just how it is. And, you know, when it came down to it, because it wasn't real, because it was the facade or my ego that was up, I buckled and failed and learned a lot of really hard lessons, very painful ones. So, Confidence is not just the appearance. Confidence is knowing how to do something and do it very well because of you, your repetition. So I use Tom Brady as an example, but uh, let, me, let me pull a personal story here. So ever since I was four years old, my dad put me in wrestling. And wrestling is a, it's just part of who I am. It's in my DNA. Um, what, what I understand now is that I had so much energy, they just, they, they had to, you know, find a way to, you know, let me express it or, or get it out, probably because I was a pain in the ass. But, you know, I've always known wrestling. I, I haven't ever known 
anything other than that being just like my primary sport. As a, as a kid, it's the season that I looked you know, most forward to. It's the one that I had the most success in. It's the one that I had the most friends, the most community, the most uh, results. And it's the one that I understood the most. You know, that, that was because of the fact that I did it for a long time. I had a lot of repetition and I had a lot of results. I had a lot of, I had a lot of success in it. So if you were to run into me or, you know, if we were in that wrestling arena or wrestling space, practice, meets, uh, tournaments, whatever the case may be, if I appeared more confident than I was maybe at school or somewhere else in public, it's because in that space, there's not anything that, you know, anybody was going to be able to do to tell me that, you know, this is how to become a good wrestler. I was already doing that. I was already, you know, having success and there was proof of it. It didn't mean that, you know, I was in there, you know, acting a certain way or giving off the appearance that I was a good wrestler. You know, you can buy all the fanciest equipment in the world and still be shitty. So, you know, that's, that's your ego, you know, it, it, that, it, that it looks a certain way, that it's the facade of success, right? So the proof is, is, is in the numbers. The proof is in the results. And personally, you know, wrestling is something that, that nobody could ever take away from me. It's not something that anybody could ever tell me how to be successful at. And from all of those things together, I developed a, a high level of, of confidence. Now, did that mean that I was really good at football? No. Does that, did that mean that I could also be confident in track? No, it didn't. It just meant that in the given arena, for what I had a lot of success and a lot of repetition and a lot of results in, I had a confident air or a confidence about that. So, you know, I've used two different, you know, sport examples now to give you um, an idea. But another example I want to give to you is, is kind of departed from both of those. And that is the example of Jordan Peterson. So Jordan Peterson has, has really taken off and his uh, public profile is, is crazy now. Um, he is a professor uh, from Canada and he's a very smart, very sharp guy. If you've not listened to any of his speeches or read his book, 12 Rules of Life, which I still need to do, um, I would highly suggest that you, you know, peek into his content. He's been on Rogan's podcast a few times, but he's just a really, really cool guy. And as it relates to confidence, so if you watch him in a speech or when he's, you know, in front of an audience, there's nothing that anybody in that room could do to, to either tell him or kind of knock him off his center of confidence. He owns the room. Now, could he go play quarterback? Is he, could he take that confidence in, you know, and lead the Patriots? Could he dominate on a wrestling mat? No. But, you know, Jordan Peterson's wife is madly in love with him because he can captivate an audience in the arena because he has a lot of success, he's very smart, and he has the results to prove it. So whether you like him or you don't, you know, he... He knows his shit. He has a lot of experience, a lot of repetition, and a lot of knowledge. And he's very, very smart. So it's, that's confidence. It's, you know, it, it's his mission to deliver a message and to really get people to, to really think about things in a different way. And, you know, to the extent that somebody's going to be able to come in and say, you know, this is how you should do it or, or you're wrong. Well, without the kinds of results or books or accolades and, and long-term repetition in the same field, why would anybody be able to, to knock him out of that, that place of confidence? You know, if he takes that confidence and thinks that, you know, it can translate into other things, that's, that's again, that's ego. So confidence, confidence is not being the strongest guy at the, at the gym. I used to think that it was that being the big, you know, guy that, you know, basically he was it, it just an egomaniac. I mean, there's no other better way to put it. The guy that, you know, thinks he can sleep with a, a, a ton of girls and not call them back or, or to treat them like shit, like the pickup artist that I used to learn from. The guy that thinks that, you know, because 
he you know has this you know grandiose sense of self that you know he deserves the mansion he deserves the the airplane um the guy that is chasing external accolades rather than being focused on his mission his purpose being able to deliver a a message or being able to deliver value help people help this community um, in a way that does so even after he's gone and how all of those things coming together really are the framework of becoming a, a very good man and doing it in a way that, you know, leaves a legacy. As, as men, it's, it's really important that, that we get focused on what it is that we're here to do. What is it that speaks to us? What is it that we, we would do for free? How can we help those around us? What is our mission? What is our purpose? And doing that with enough time and repetition, even without results, in whatever arena that may be, sports, business, philosophy, it doesn't fucking matter. Confidence comes from knowing how to do something very well and ignoring your ego and paying attention to your mission and your purpose and living that to its very core. That is confidence. So, that is the end of the three-part series. Please share your comments below. I'm anxious to hear what you guys think about this week's series. And if you have not yet done so, please do share the channel with anybody that you feel would be good contributors here to the ManCore community. I need to run, fellas, but uh, it has been a real treat. Thank you so much for joining me this week on the ManCore. Cheers.